Welcome on in, Tax Savers. How are we doing today? It is Thursday. The sun has finally cleared here in Southern California, and I'm back with you to share more tax tips. Hope you're excited to be here with me right now. If you don't mind, I want to know where you're calling in from. I can see all of the comments that are coming through today. Feel free to share with me the city, state, location that you're calling in from, and one maybe one thing that you're looking to learn um, from me during the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge. The Tax-Free Wealth Challenge kicks off on Monday. It'll be going from Monday through Friday. <clears throat> and during the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge, I get to teach you all of my advanced tax strategies over the course of five days. How many of you guys have already signed up for the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge? Put yes in the chat box if you've already signed up. Put no in the chat box if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, and I will have my team post the link to get your ticket. I want to make sure that you get your ticket for the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge because there is a capacity limit of the amount of people that we'll let into the coaching call, and we'll be conducting these coaching calls on Zoom. The reason why we're going to do that is because I want to be able to meet with you, allow for you to unmute, tell me your tax situation, and I can come up with strategies with you so we can determine how to best help you with your taxes this upcoming year. A lot of you guys who are on here today are on here because you want to learn something about taxes that's going to help you get where you want to go in life. And assuming that you want to get to a place where you're not worried about money, you're not worried about Uncle Sam, you're not worried about the IRS. Can I agree with that? Put a yes in the chat box if that is you. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to teach you guys an amazing tax loophole. This tax loophole is one that is not really talked too much about. And the reason why it's not talked too much about is you guys know there's, an, there's a void, there's an absence of really good tax knowledge on the internet. I mean, I've done a pretty good job of trying to cover as much as I possibly can there's still so much for me to cover, and I know that you guys are aware of that. The tax code is over 82,452 pages. Why do I know that? My mother dropped the tax code book on my lap when I was 14 years old, and that was right around the time I started working in her tax and accounting firm. So I've been in the tax space for quite a long time, guys, and uh, it's almost second nature to me, but sports was really where I, where I first started out. Now, that being aside, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the iPad today. I'm going to teach you guys one tax loophole that I really want to make sure that you grasp. But those who were on the call yesterday, I just want to congratulate you and say thank you so much for getting yourself into the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge. I gave out 29 of my courses to you, though, to those who were here yesterday. I may or may not be giving some out today. What that looks like is I have a course on how to place your children on payroll. I know a lot of parents out there are kind of struggling with figuring out how to establish legitimate work for their children. I also have a program that teaches you how to establish the home office if you're somebody that's working from home or if you would like to make sure that you can take the home office deduction. I go over exactly how to how to qualify for the strategy and make sure that you're taking it in the right way. And last but not least, the LLC tax strategy blueprint. That's probably one of my favorite programs. I created this program because many business owners set up LLCs to start out with and they need to know how to implement strategies inside of their LLC prior to filing tax returns. So if you were on the coaching call yesterday, you got access to those three programs as a part of purchasing your VIP ticket to the Tax-Free Wealth event. Um, so we might be giving a few out today. If you don't mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over to the screen. I wanna see where some people are calling, calling in from and say hi. I know that there were some people that showed up here first. I wanna say hello to Sterling, Sterling Epic Castille, uh, Mario Martinez calling me the goat of taxes. I appreciate you, brother. Abraham Guzman, Dennis McGlore, Ali Van, Justin H, Corey C, Nicole T, Red X Gaming, Ramon Valdez. How are you guys doing today? Guys, I hope you're excited to learn from me. The reason why I'm going to jump into the iPad is because I have a presentation that I put together to go over this strategy. And I told a lot of those that were here yesterday that you need to make sure that you have a pencil, a paper, something that you can write this information down on. Because after I go over this information today, this isn't getting posted to YouTube. So this information is not just out there. I want to make sure I can cover it today in today's lesson. Does that sound fair? You guys are cool with me doing that. First off, I just want to make sure you guys are comfortable with me teaching you a tax loophole. How many of you guys are comfortable? I'm going to wait until I get, I'm going to get 25 yeses. Once I get 25 yeses, I'll go ahead and jump in and I'll teach the tax loophole. I'll wait. Because I want to make sure that you guys are okay with me teaching this. How I many of you guys are okay with me teaching you this one tax loophole could be the difference between you saving anywhere between fourteen dollars to $28,000 in your taxes this year? Mm. Now I see a lot of yeses. Okay, that woke some people up. All right. For those that don't know me, by the way, my name is Carlton Dennis. I'm a tax strategist. As you probably see, my YouTube channel is over half a million because of you guys. You guys have found affinity to my tax information. 
I try to simplify something that's so complex. Today, we're going to go over a strategy called the Augusta loophole strategy. The Augusta loophole strategy is underneath an IRS tax code called IRC-280A. So if you're following me right now, that's the first thing I want you to write down. I want you to write down IRC-280A. Do I need you to memorize tax codes? No. But the better you understand this, the better you're going to feel confident taking this on your tax returns. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the iPad. And I'm going to break this down for you. When I break this down, I have it broken down in a step-by-step -step process because majority of taxpayers tell me, Carlton, if you can just give me a step-by-step -step process, I can do my part in being able to take the tax deduction. How many of you guys would like for me to give you the step-by-step -step process on how to take the Augusta loophole strategy? I know many of you guys might know what it is, but no one's shown you the step by step process on how to take the strategy. Put step right now in the comment section if you would like for me to jump in here and show you the steps that you're gonna need. I wanna make sure that you guys are here with me. Put step in the chat box if you're ready to jump into this. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, first thing is we have to talk about what the IRC 280A code section is. It's called the Augusta loophole. I wanna make sure you guys understand this. The Augusta rule known to the IRS as section 280A allows homeowners, homeowners to rent out their home for up to 14 days per year without needing to report the rental income on their individual tax return. What this tax code allows for you to do is it allows for you to rent out your primary residence up to 14 days without you having to pay any taxes on the income that you're claiming as a tax deduction. Now, when I heard this for the very first time, it was a little bit confusing. I was like, what do you mean? I'm renting out my house. Well, who am I renting out my house to? Am I renting it out to my business? How, do my, how does my business get to rent out my house? Is it because I have a home office? This is completely separate than the home office deduction. This strategy means that you can take this 280A, renting your, your business to your house, your house to your business, and you can also take the home office deduction at the exact same time. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So if you're following with me, this strategy is for someone who's obviously self-employed. As you guys know, I, I do teach basically on tax codes that are for the self-employed or the real estate investor, partly because there's just more tax benefits once you decide to establish a business or become a real estate investor. If you're a W-2 employee or here right now and you have a high income earning job, I'm not telling you that you need to become a business owner, but I am telling you, you might want to look at having an investment property on your tax returns. We'll jump into that conversation later. But if you're self-employed, you are probably aware of the home office deduction. The standard home office deduction allows for you to write up up to 300 square feet of workspace in your residence at $5 per square feet for a maximum of $1,500. If you use more space than that in your home to run a business, the area method and number of rooms method can be used to write off a larger portion of your home. So many taxpayers right now are taking the home office deduction if they're aware of how to take it. They can either choose the basic method, which is called the regular method, and take up to $1,500, or they can choose the area method and take an area of their house and write off the percentage of the area that they're using inside of their homes. But this strategy that I'm covering right here, right here is completely different than the home office deduction. It actually doesn't really revolve so much just around the square footage of your house. So let's talk about it. Section 280A offers business owners an additional perk. It lets them rent out their home to their business for 14 days out of the calendar year. Now, for those of you who are joining me right now, why, are, why is Carlton all of a sudden putting up a slide point presentation today? The reason why I'm putting up a slide point presentation is because I want to teach you the step-by-step -step process on how to implement this strategy. It's one thing to give you information. It's another thing to apply the information. Yes? How many of you guys are going to apply this strategy after I teach it to you today? Put it in the chat box that you're going to apply the strategy. Because that's what I'm planning on doing. My, my, I already leveraged this strategy last year on my tax return. I know how to apply it myself. That's not why I'm here today. All I'm here today is to make sure that you learn how to apply it. So I want to make sure that everyone is locked in on what they're going to need to do with me. All right, let's jump back in. Now, this means your business can write off business events and meetings as a business expense and you can collect the income. Who can collect the income? Please tell me in the chat box. Who did I just say can collect the income? That means that your business 
can write off business events and meetings as a business expense and you can collect the income. To make matters even better, this rental income is tax-free. Can someone put tax-free in the chat box really quick for me right now? I just want to make sure that we're talking about things that save us money. I just want to make sure we're all here today for the same reason. Are we here today to save money? Okay. Somebody put tax-free in the chat box with me right now. Who's got me? Thank you, MZDZ. Appreciate you, Google user. Thank you, Sean Updiraf, Raul Gonzalez, Corey C., Josh Rally, Jomo Mighty. Jomo was here yesterday. Benjamin Rod, Karina Alvarez, Robert Pearson. Thank you so much. All right. Let's talk about how we can get some more tax-free money. This, me this may seem like a dishonest loophole. For some of you who are probably watching this right now, you're probably thinking like, ah, this isn't, this isn't something I can do. This is probably something that's just for the wealthy class. This is, probably, this is probably just reserved for entrepreneurs who are making millions of dollars, who have multiple houses. But it's not. The IRS created this strategy, okay? They created it. The IRS created the strategy. Businesses need meetings. And I'm sure you guys know that. They need board meetings. They need tax planning meetings. That's for sure. They need shareholder meetings. If you're in a business that has multiple shareholders and strategic planning meetings are just a few of the meetings that are necessary to even run a legitimate business. At least I would say, I know I'm having multiple meetings with my staff throughout the week, throughout the month. In most cases, a business would rent out a meeting room. You don't have an office. Maybe you're renting out a meeting room or you're renting out an office or maybe a conference room or even a ballroom at a hotel. This rental would include charges for the space, state, local taxes, food, drinks, Wi-Fi, and any additional services. Question I have for you, taxpayer. How many of you guys have gone to a ballroom before for an event in a hotel maybe? How many of you guys put yes in the chat box if you've gone to an event that was in a ballroom at a hotel? What did they have in the ballroom? Like what was present that, you, that the person who was renting out the ballroom, what were they given? Like, Name that in the chat box. What were the items that they needed to have? What were the things that they needed to present in order for them to even want to host the meeting in that ballroom? Can you guys name some things out? Okay, so some food, drinks. Yes, coffee, pens, water, Wi-Fi, projector screen, tables. Thank you so much, Josh, Nicole, Mr. Momo, Alvaro. Chairs, tables, thank you. Absolutely. Question I have for you. Do you have some of these same items in your household? Yes or no? I just want to know. Yes or no? Put it in your chat box. Do you have chairs, tables, pens, Wi-Fi, water, electricity in your household? I'm just asking. Just want to make sure I know your tax position. We're going we're gonna to solve this strategy. I want everyone to walk away knowing how to implement this strategy today. That's... That's what I am, I'm very sure of. I'm, I'm sure that when I showed up here today that I was going to teach this strategy well enough that most of you guys were going to walk away knowing how to implement it. That's my goal. All right, let's jump back into the iPad. So in most cases, a business would rent out a meeting room, conference room, or even a ballroom or hotel. This rental would include charges for the space. They would have to charge you for, the, for renting out that space. They're going to charge you for using their Wi-Fi. They're going to charge you for, for borrowing their chairs and, and requesting extra chairs and and asking for water and snacks to be present in the room. They're going to charge you for those things, aren't they? Okay. You probably have a lot of the same things at your home. I mentioned this. You probably have chairs. You have tables. You have food in your refrigerator or food you can go get from Costco. You have the ability to acquire drinks. And you have the ability to provide Wi-Fi. Why not just put that money in your own pocket instead of paying a hospitality venue like a hotel or a restaurant to conduct a meeting? Didn't we just all agree that most businesses have meetings? We all agreed about that. How many of you guys are business owners? Put a B in the chat box. If you're a business owner right now, I just need to get a head count. I see that we have over 237 viewers on here right now, at least from my perspective. I just want to get a head count. How many of you guys are business owners? If you're joining right now, put a B in the chat box. We're doing an exercise. This exercise is we want to save money and Carlton's going to come up with a strategy that's going to help us. And he has a step-by-step -step process we're following. Put a B in the chat box if you'd like to save money right now and you have a business. Perfect. All right, perfect. All right. So you probably have a lot of the same things that I just mentioned in your household or you have the ability to provide these things. 
for your business. You have the ability to provide these things for your business, right? Chairs, table, food, drinks, Wi-Fi. Not, why not just put that money in your own pocket instead of paying a hospitality venue, instead of paying the Westin, instead of paying um, Hilton? Why not keep that money in your own pocket? This is where IRS comes in. Carlton, is IRS really trying to help me? I'll explain. I'll explain. IRC 280A G or the 14 day rental rule. Ah, so it does have a little bit of a name to it. Allows business owners to claim a home rental fee as a business expense. I'll repeat that because sometimes when, when, when I say these things, I know it can go over your head pretty quickly. It went over my head the first time I was learning about this strategy. Let me repeat that. The 14 day rule allows business owners to claim a home rental fee as a business expense. After all, if you weren't renting the space from yourself, you would be renting it from someone else. And as long as the number of days on which you rent out your domicile, aka your primary, to your business is less than 15 days. How many days, guys? Put that in the chat box. I know someone in this is going to get it. Mm, I really don't hope anyone gets this wrong. So we're just all going to take the time to put it in the chat box to make Carlton feel better about this. How many rental days? Okay, I just want to make sure you guys are following along. Which you rent out your domicile to your business is less than 15 days. The income your business pays to you personal account is tax-free. Can we put the tax-free in the chat box again? Just one more time. That one's for me. I'm going to be honest. I just want you to do that one personally for me. If you could please put tax free in the chat box. That would be, you'd be helping my, you'd be helping me out with that one. Okay. I like that. I like anytime I see tax free in the tax code. Like anytime I hear, I, I see it, I highlight it with a yellow marker and then I go find me a red marker and I'll highlight it with a red marker. Then I'll, I'll get a blue marker and I'm just going to highlight it with every color I got. Cause I get so excited when I see tax free. Who else is like that? Right. Okay. So I'm going to just repeat this one more time because somebody is not going to understand it unless I do. So we're just going to go over it one more time and then I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of how to implement this. I have not forgot. We still need to figure out how to do it. Okay. This is where the IRS comes in. In IRC 280A on the 14-day rental rule, it allows business owners to claim a home rental fee as a business expense. After all, if you weren't renting the space from somebody, from yourself, you would be renting it from someone else. You would be renting it from someone else. If I need to have a meeting with my staff or I need to bring all of my staff together for a meeting, I might have to rent out a space at a hotel to do that or I can choose to conduct it in my own house. I could even choose to conduct a meeting myself in my own house if I don't have any staff. Are you following me? All right. And as long as the number of days on which you rent out your domicile to your business is less than 15 days, the income your business pays to your personal account, that means that your business is going to have to pay your personal account, is tax-free. So now we need to go over kind of the fine details here to make sure we don't mess this up. And it looks like I put my presentation in order. How does it work? Probably what everyone's thinking. Now, if you have the piece of paper out like I asked you to get, I told you there was going to be a step-by-step -step process on how we're going to do it. If you're wondering how many steps, no secret, there's six steps. I'm going to teach you these six steps right now. And then hopefully, hopefully we can go ahead and take this deduction in confidence. Yes? All right. Number one, you need to schedule meetings at your house. I don't know why when I'm working with uh, taxpayers and I do tax planning, they forget to do the things that I'm telling them to do. It's not on me. It's on them when they get in, into an IRS audit because they're the ones who sign off on the tax return. It's my job to make sure I calculate the tax savings. I can lead you to the water. I need you to drink it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can understand that. What about scheduling the meetings at your house? I need you to actually put the meetings on your calendar. There needs to be documentation that you are actually attempting to meet at your house. So you need to legitimately actually document the meetings at your house. Everything has to be documented. This is not a deduction that we're just going to try to get over on the IRS and just write it off on our tax returns. We have to legitimately set up the scene. So the first thing we're going to do is put these meetings on our calendar. And know that you cannot claim more than 14 days of meetings at your residence. Note, 
that these meetings cannot be for entertainment purposes because as of 2018, the IRS no longer allows for entertainment. We can no longer deduct entertainment on our tax returns, okay? Now, keep it on the safe side and only schedule these meetings with current clients, people in the business, you're somebody that's in your own business and not potential clients. So one more time, current clients and people in your business, not potential clients. Carlton, why not potential clients? Because this tax code has um, an audit technique guide and many taxpayers just like to recategorize the, the expenses that they have inside of their bookkeeping as the Augusta rule where they rented out to their house and then they stated that I threw parties and had my friends over and it was a business meeting. This has been abused. Obviously, this tax code can be abused. So rather than, ab than abusing it, the IRS created an audit technique guide and said, mm, we're going to allow this for current clients and people that are actually in the business. Sound fair? Okay. Now, part of the advantage of scheduling these rental days over the course of the tax year is that you can write the charges for these rental services into your income ahead of time, which can help you map out your income plan for the rest of the year, such as trying to avoid a certain tax threshold or reach a certain gross income. Hmm. So if, if I know that you're already living in a primary residence and I know that you're a business owner and I know that you're a business owner that has the ability to rent out your home to your business, couldn't we calculate your tax savings right now and know what we could do with those, those tax savings ahead of time? This is the difference between being a proactive taxpayer and being a reactive taxpayer. I'll be honest, reactive taxpayers are just reacting to what happened last year in 2022. They're getting their tax documents right now and they're like, okay, I need to file my tax returns. They're just like reacting. They're, like, they're just getting hit left and right with taxes. Uncle Sam is throwing the basketball at their head, right? They're just reacting to everything. A proactive taxpayer is like, dude, I already solved 2022 back in like November. I already knew how much I was able to offset whatever taxes that I have left over. I'm cool with paying that. By the way, I already have my bookkeeping in order for 2023 since we're already two months. Oh yeah, three months into the year. Welcome to March 1st. And then um, I'm gonna start figuring out the strategies that I qualify for ahead of time so I can make financial decisions with my liquidity. Because guess what? Real investors know how and when to invest based off of their taxes, not just because they want to invest, right? All right, let's keep going. So step number one, hopefully you wrote this down. You need to schedule meetings at your house. Carlton said these meetings need to be with current clients and people in the business. You're a person in the business, okay? So if you have meetings with yourself, that is okay. I know it sounds a little weird. You're able to have meetings with yourself. As an S corporation owner, you're probably already aware of that. All right, number two, take your corporate meeting minutes. What does this mean? These meetings need to be conducted for legitimate business purposes. Take down the number of minutes of each meeting because you will likely need to submit them to the IRS if they decide to examine your business. In fact, you can even be proactive and submit them alongside your business tax filings with your CPA. So when uh, taxpayers file tax returns in my office and we leverage the strategy, we have them submit their minutes ahead of time. Why? Because most of people who file tax returns with us they're, ne they're never going to have time to deal with an IRS audit themselves anyways. They're going to have my team and our, our team deal with any notices or anything that could ever arise. But the thing is, is I don't ever want to be in long audits. If someone wants to question something on your tax return, I want to have all the documentation right there ready to go so we can get the audit off of our backs because audits are at random. Now, you do not have to hire a note taker for these corporate, ma corporate minutes. You could just take notes and transcribe them into a presentable format. Now, if you are running a business, you are probably already familiar with the idea of accounting and note-taking to cooperate operating expenses and miscellaneous itemized deductions. The same principle is at work here. Whether, whether or not you usually take notes at meetings, if you are taking advantage of the tax deduction, you want to be able to back that claim up legitimately in the case of an audit. Okay? So most taxpayers who are making large expenses will sometimes um, document what the expense is for. Typically in our business, anytime we have expenses over $5,000, we're gonna document what the expense is, and we just write out an entire statement and attach that um, with our bookkeeping. The reason why we do this is because later down the year, sometimes you get audited, and you're not gonna remember what those expenses were. It's years later. So we always wanna make sure we're documenting our expenses. Now, the same rules applies for when it comes to 
step number two, taking corporate meeting minutes. You're a corporation. You already have to take your corporate meeting minutes. It's a requirement of being a corporation. What I'm saying here is I just need you to document the meeting minutes that you're conducting while you're renting out your home to your corporation. Step number three, find comparables. This is the step that is probably most missed, and I want to explain it a little bit slow. When you decide to take the Augusta loophole, you're going to need to shop around and find out how much hospitality venues charge for the type of meeting you will be hosting at your home. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. This is a little bit of work for you, so I just want to make sure that you understand your part as a taxpayer in order to receive this tax deduction. This is also something that your tax strategist can help you do, but this is something that I would say is more of the heavy lifting in order to get the tax deduction. So you're going to need to shop around and find out how much hospitality venues charge for the type of meeting you would be hosting in your home. This will vary from area to area and require a little footwork. It's often not necessary to call more than one hotel or restaurant and get their rates for events and services. You probably don't need to do a thorough comparison of several venues. When it comes to buying and selling real estate, we typically recommend pulling a number of comparables. But in this case, it's a safe bet that if one hotel is charging a thousand for a one day conference, then most other hotels in the area are charging a similar rate. So I have a few hotels that are around me. There's like the Westin Hotel, there's a Hilton Hotel. There's the Langham Hotel. There's the W Hotel. So what I did last year was I called these hotels and I wanted to know how much would it cost for me to rent the venue for a day? Matter of fact, how much would it cost me if I wanted to rent it for eight hours in the day, this day of the, this day of the month? And then I asked them, again, if I wanted to do this type of event that I'm doing, what would it look like at this place? And I called another hotel. I got three different prices that were all around the same price. Maybe one was $1,200, one was $900, one was $1,000. I was able to take the medium price based off of the comparables to determine how much I was going to charge for renting out my space uh, to my corporation. Okay, So step number three is you have to find comparables. This is a very key step if you would like to take this tax deduction in confidence because the documentation of you getting the comparables stands up inside of an IRS audit. Make sense? All right, number four. Next, we need to create the invoice. This is when we actually receive the tax deduction. We need to create an invoice from you to your business. Now, this invoice should specify all the charges and reflect the numbers indicated by your search for comparables. One more time. This invoice should specify all charges, reflect the numbers indicated by your search for comparables, which was step number three, right? Okay. Now, these invoices will come from you, the property owner, renting out your qualified residence to be paid by your business. The entity renting out the home instead of a typical business meeting venue. The rental portion of your home will also be tax-free. So these invoices are important to save not only as indicators of operating expenses for your business, but also as an indicator of tax-free income for personal purposes. Though an invoice can technically be as informal as an email exchange, it is better to use some sort of software or template that creates a standard invoice you can replicate 14 times so that it looks like a legitimate invoice. Hmm. So I have software that I use that allows for me to create invoices. My business was invoiced 14 separate times for renting out my house. That was important for me to do because this is a part of me documenting and I wanted to make sure the documentation was something I never have to worry about when it comes to my taxes. Number five, pay the expense. Have the business pay this expense, which is paying you. For example, with a business check, keep a paper trail to solidify the legitimacy of this transaction. For example, you might stamp yourself served invoices paid or just issue a receipt. This paid expense will get the tax treatment of a business expense on the side of your business, aka that's where the deduction happens, just like any other operating expenses for your business must shoulder, which are listed as a deduction against gross income. Again, you will want to make sure the pricing point of renting out your personal residence real estate looks legitimate. An over generous amount paid on the side of your business listed as an operating expense could be a red flag just as much as overpricing your personal residence for tax-free income 
to look like a red flag on your personal tax returns. So taxpayers who take this tax strategy, I always determine where you're living. I know that the cost in California is different than the cost in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The, what someone can charge to rent out their house in California is different than what someone may be able to charge somewhere else. So we, as your tax strategists, have to look at the legitimacy of how much you're charging based on your location and make sure that you're taking tax strategies and in integrity with the law. Because I'm not going to make you file a tax return where you're just shooting you know, arrows and you don't really know what exactly you should be charging yourself, right? So how we can protect ourselves is making sure we follow step number, step number three, find comparables, make sure we invoice the business. And then after invoicing the business, we need to actually pay ourselves, which is paying the expense. So our business receives the tax deduction. Now, step number six is depending on whether or not you need to do this is issuing a 1099 to yourself. Any business that solidifies the services or goods of someone who is not on their payroll needs to issue a 1099 at the end of the year. Contractors rendering services, supplies, and venues providing meeting spaces are all entities that would receive such tax reporting forms. Issue one to yourself, not your business. This form is in the contradiction to the W-2, the employers issued to employees. There are more stores and online venues that sell tax forms, including office supply stores and accounting software. You can also order them directly from the IRS. Remember to have at least two copies of the 1099, a copy for you and a copy for your business. All right. Let's recap. So the, st the tax strategy that we were covering here today is code section 280A. Code section 280A essentially allows for us to rent out our house to our business for 14 days, but there's some rules involved. One of the most important rules is that we have to find comparables. We can't just come up with whatever amount that we want to rent out our house to and just say, well, I want to cover my mortgage. That's not going to be able to work. So you need to make sure that you're finding comparables from maybe hospitality venues since you're going to be hosp hospice. <laughs> Be providing hospitality for your business during those 14 days. One of the things that I want to make sure that you guys understand about the title of today's presentation is today's presentation was titled the number two tax loophole for 2023. There's stronger tax loopholes in the tax code that we should be leveraging. As a matter of fact, one of the strongest tax loopholes in the tax code that I'll be teaching on will be on day four during the tax free wealth challenge. This tax loophole does revolve around real estate. And I believe a majority of you guys want to own real estate as a part of your legacy, as a part of your wealth building. If that is the case and you're, you're in a position where you're trying to get into real estate or that's something that you see yourself doing in the future, you're going to want to make sure that you sign up for the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to spend the next probably 10 minutes looking through, seeing if there's any questions that I can answer. And I'm going to also offer you guys the ability to have access to the tax-free the tax living bundle that I gave out yesterday. The Tax-Free Living Bundle will come with the LLC Tax Strategy Blueprint Guide, which is my blueprint giving you exact strategies that I feel like you should be leveraging if you're a new business owner. I'll also provide you with the Home Office Tax Strategy Guide in case you're unaware of how to exactly take the Home Office deduction. And most importantly, I'll be providing you with the Children on Payroll Guide. What I'll do right now is show you guys what those guides look like so you have a better idea of what you can see when you get inside the program. Children on Payroll Guide is extremely important because you need to understand how to establish legitimate work for your children. So that'll be what we go into in lesson two. When you establish legitimate work for your children, just like making the payment for the Augusta loophole, you're going to need to know how to make the payment to your children correctly. Does this mean that you need to open up bank accounts for them? Does that mean that you get to have access to the money? I look to solve those questions for you inside of this program. Also, the documentation and key considerations. Just like how you're going to need to document for the Augusta loophole strategy, there will be a specific documentation that you'll need to have when you place your children on payroll. And not to mention, what are going to be the tax savings? Because the tax savings might be different for you than it is for somebody else, depending on how much you're charging for your children to be on payroll. But that might not be all that you may need. Placing your children may not be the only strategies that you're looking for to reduce your tax bill. That's why I created the LLC Tax Blueprint, which also gives you, a, gives you the ability to jump into the LLC tax strategies that I placed here for you, such as how to pay yourself correctly, how to take business meal write-offs if you're traveling, how to take advanced vehicle tax deductions, making sure that also if you're ever wondering how you can take other people with you on a business travel trip, how you're going to do that successfully, I make sure that I cover that as well. I also want to make sure that you guys have the uh, ability to write off your vehicles because I know that the vehicles is a very hot topic. Most importantly, setting up your LLC. A lot of us are trying to set up our LLCs in a way in which we can protect our names, our family's information, our current addresses from being online. 
So I wanted to make sure I gave you guys my advice as opposed to choosing your name, which state you should be setting up an LLC in, how to really appoint a registered agent, which all LLC owners need to have a registered agent, um, how to create articles of organization, whether it's for yourself or you're in partnership with the business owner. Most importantly, getting your EIN number, which the EIN number is the social security number for your business. Yes, I can post the link. Let me post the link for you guys right now. For the next 10 people who join, you guys will get access to these programs. So let me make sure that you guys have that. And by the way, I'm going to show that page. Let me jump over here. This will be the page that you guys click on with the link that I just posted. This page right here is where you guys can sign up for the event. Part of the reason why I put this page together is I wanted to explain to you guys what you guys are going to learn with me over the next five days. The, the event kicks off on Monday and day one is going to be mindset. I have worked with a lot of taxpayers who now can honestly say that they feel a lot more confident being able to take the tax deductions that they're taking. And it really is a mindset shift on how we need to go about approaching the tax code. So the day one that we will have, which will kick off on Monday, will be the entire mindset of the wealthy entrepreneur. I'm going to teach you guys how the top 1% of taxpayers who are paying nothing in taxes with me every single year, what we're doing and what their mindset is to, to make sure that they're constantly never paying taxes. Once you understand how somebody else approaches taxes, I think you can adopt that mindset as well and know what you need to do. Now, day two is entity structuring. Yesterday, we talked about all the different entities you could possibly set up, but that wasn't entity structuring. There's so many different things that we can do when it comes to layering entities on top of each other. So I've dedicated an entire day to entity structuring. Now, day three is going to be auto and home office. Home office is not me teaching you the home office deduction. I'm going to be going over a completely different deduction than the home office and code section 280A, which is the Augusta loophole strategy. I have a completely different strategy that I have never talked about on YouTube that will allow for you to utilize your space if you're renting or if you have a primary residence to your business that will provide massive tax deductions for you, as well as how you can also take advantage of an automobile that you may or may not be currently using inside of your business and still be able to write off 100% of it, even though the vehicle may not weigh over 6,000 pounds. So I know a lot of us will be interested to learn a little bit more about that. Day four, I'm going to spend time going over income shifting strategies. This is my expertise. I'm really good at knowing how to take income off of the tax return. I have a, a wide variety of strategies that allow for me to do that. When you show up to day four, you're going to need to also make sure that you show up on time because I'm not going to slow down. I'm going to go through every single income shifting strategy that I have to offer. And then day five, huh, the, the best day is the number one tax loophole that I think in the tax code I'll be teaching on, which will be the advanced real estate tax strategies. I'm going to give you guys the exact step-by-step -step process on how to use real estate to avoid W-2, 1099, any type of income tax that you might be facing. You can literally pay as little as 0% in income taxes legally with real estate, and I'm going to teach you that. You'll also get to see some of my other members who are also leveraging those real estate strategies during the five days. Now, why am I explaining this? Well, as many of you guys know, my name is Carlton Dennis. I've been a licensed enrolled agent for the past five years. What that means is, is that I have this designation where I speak on tax law and I have a good understanding of how to make sure I implement the right laws into your tax return. And then I have a whole team of CPAs that actually file the tax return. The reason why I chose to be a tax strategist is I'm going to be very honest with you. I didn't want to sit in front of the computer every single day, just clicking away at a program. That's not to say that I don't know how to do that. I just know that there's others that are better at sitting in front of a computer for longer periods of time than me. I'm really good at studying things and then coming up with different methods on how to use it. That's why I chose to become a tax strategist. As a part of being a tax strategist, I feel empowered because I've helped thousands of entrepreneurs find tax-free wealth, which hence the name of why we're calling our event Tax-Free Wealth. Now, we kicked this event off twice last year. And last year, I brought 100 members in to allow for me to put together a strategic tax plan for them to set up the entities for them to provide cost segregation studies and for them to allow for me to help them purchase their very first investment properties. And a majority of them ended up saving massive amounts of tax. In total, between last year and up to today, we saved $26 million in taxes. $26 million that Uncle Sam currently does not have that is in my taxpayers' pockets because of the information that was provided. Now, I know a lot of you guys are, are going to show up because you want information, but I really want you to show up because you're trying to apply the information I'm going to be teaching you over the five days. This isn't, uh, you know, a motivational presentation. I'm not a motivational person. When you come to my event, there's not going to be anything about motivation being talked about. I am not a motivation person. I'm not a Tony Robbins. I'm a 
Here's the information you were looking for. Here's how you implement it. Do you have questions? That's the type of person I am. And if you're okay with that, I think it'd be really awesome to work with you. I think it'd be really awesome to have you a part of the presentation. Now, here's the thing I want to tell you. You might want to look at signing up for VIP so I actually know who you are. If you made the mistake for signing up for general admission, I can help you out. You're going to need to upgrade your ticket here. So I'm going to post the upgrade link. The reason why I'm going to encourage you to upgrade your ticket to VIP is because if you upgrade your ticket to VIP, I'll actually know who you are. VIPs will get to unmute. I'll get to ask them questions. You'll get to ask me questions and we'll get a chance to actually be able to talk about your tax position. VIPs will also need to come ready with their prior three years tax returns and their bookkeeping and accounting in order up to 2022. If you're a general admission, you're just there to show up. You're probably somebody that's just curious about taxes. You're not really serious about trying to save anything. So if you're somebody that is a VIP, it's important that you listen to me right now. I need you to make sure that you, you get a copy of your prior three years tax returns. That is gonna be your 2021, your 2020, and your 2019 returns, okay? I just need to make sure that you have copies of those ready to go. If you also have your profit and loss statement for 2022, which is your bookkeeping and accounting already accounted for, the total amount of income and expenses, I need you to have that ready. You're gonna be able to save money during these five days if you show up with your information. If you don't show up with your information, it'll be very hard for you to act on anything I'm gonna be teaching you during the five days. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the time to congratulate a few people. I have my team member, Zach, that's going to pull open some names. For those who are joining VIP right now, I'm going to read off some of the names, and I'm going to give you guys access to the program here. One more, one more time, I'm going to jump in here so you guys can know what I'm talking about. So this program is a, uh, a three-part program that I put together. Okay, It goes over the home office deduction, where I'm explaining how to take the expenses in your home and deduct them on your tax return how to make the calculations correctly, how to choose the space in your home correctly, and most importantly, how to make sure you don't screw anything up that the IRS might be looking for. And then I put a test here to make sure that if you did screw something up, that this test catches that for you. The last thing I want you doing is taking a tax, taking a tax deduction the wrong way. I wanna make sure you're taking it the right way. I just need to make sure that you're taking the test that I've created for you. Now, if you're wondering what, other, what, what else do I get if I just sign up for VIP right now and I decide to join the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge, you're also going to get my LLC tax strategy blueprint, okay? The reason why I created this is because I have a lot of taxpayers right now who are trying to set up their LLCs correctly. I, I, I covered exactly what you need to do to make sure you're setting up your LLC correctly, how to set up your articles of an organization, how to appoint a registered agent, get your EIN number, and handle your operating expenses. And last but not least, children on payroll, the helping hand guide. Let me move myself out of the way here. The children on payroll helping hand guide is a a guide that I created that shows you how to place your children on payroll. You might be wondering, Carlton, how old do my children need to be in order to go on payroll? I solved that in here. I can tell you exactly what the age is, when you can start putting them on payroll, and what they're going to be doing if they're so young to the point where they're really young. What exactly are they going to be doing for us to not get ourselves in trouble with the IRS? That's covered inside of this document. Let me go ahead and congratulate some people that are uh, joining the Tax Free Wealth Challenge. What I'm going to do. So I think we're going to only have 10 people. We're going to give the program out to 10 people. Let's start off right now. Congratulations in, in END Management Services. Congratulations on joining the Tax-Free Wealth Challenge. I look forward to kicking things off with you Monday at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Congratulations, Charles Hall. Congratulations, Violet P. Matthews. Congratulations, Jagan Selivara. Congratulations, Kofi Misson. Congratulations, Nam Wang. Congratulations, Corey Millett. Congratulations, Aneka Winstead. Congratulations, Karen Quintanilla. Oh, congratulations, Tyler Cerny. Congratulations, Jonathan Goodwin. Congratulations, JP Morgan. Congratulations. All right, guys, we're going to wait for about a few other people to join because I feel like I want to give this program out to a couple more people. One of the things that I want to make sure that I cover before we jump off here today is that I want to make sure that you have these six steps written down before we leave. So for those who are joining us late, we covered a very important tax code. We covered the Augusta rule. The Augusta rule is code section 280A. Now, in order to take this tax rule, you need to understand what it is. The rule allows for you to rent out your home, if you're a homeowner, to your house for 14 days without having to pay any taxes on the rental income. In order to take the deduction, you need to follow the six steps that we have here listed. And I'm going to go over the six steps very quickly. The six steps are, one, you need to make sure you schedule meetings at your house. We talked about this. You're not documenting these meetings. You're not protecting yourself from the IRS. 
The reason why I can, I can speak so confidently on taking these tax deductions is because I just spend a lot of my time studying what the, tax, what the IRS looks for. I forgot to tell you guys this. Many of you guys don't even know this. The IRS lived above my tax office. Their offices are above my tax office. I meet with these people almost every other day. Before COVID, before everyone was locked up in, in their homes and we were forced, <laughs> we were forced to, you know, be in front of our TV screens and everything that was going on during that crazy period. We used to show up to our office. I had tax professionals that showed up to the office instead of having 100% of my staff remote at the time. On the fourth floor of my office was the IRS auditing department. They had their own facility there. I would run into these people in the morning. I would run into them at lunch. I would run into them when they're leaving the office. I would just spend every day asking them for one, documentations of audit technique guides that they are more than happy to provide me. And two, what are the things that you are looking for in an IRS audit? When you're sitting there talking to IRS auditors for three or four years on end, you become very well the things that they're looking for. So much to the point where you're like, okay, I'm going to make sure I do everything in compliance with the IRS so that I can have fun with the tax code. That is, what's, that is what tax-free wealth is about. Now, in order to make sure that you take this tax write-off correctly, one, you need to make sure you put the meetings on your calendar. The IRS will look for that, whether or not you actually documented your meeting. So we're going to make sure that you did do that. And then they also want to make sure that you're only meeting with current clients and people inside of your business, aka yourself. If you're a business owner and you are meeting with yourself, that is completely fine. Yes, guys, I'll post the link one more time. Give me a, give me a second. Let me post that for you. Step number two, there you go. Step number two is you need to make sure that you take corporate meeting minutes. These meetings need to be conducted for legitimate business purposes. If you're a corporation, you're aware that you already need to actually log your meeting minutes as a corporation. You do not have to hire a note taker for these corporate meeting minutes. You can take these notes yourself. I just wanna make sure that you are practicing the principle of documenting your expenses. So that's gonna be super important. Number three, find comparables. You need to shop around and find out how much hospitality venues charge the type of meeting that you'll be hosting at your home. We cannot fly by the whim and just decide that we're gonna take this tax deduction without actually researching how much we can charge ourselves for renting out a space. We are gonna find comparables, and that means that we need to call hospitality venues. Now, after we've gotten the right price, we need to make sure we invoice the business. I recommend invoicing the business 14 times separately to show that you are conducting 14 separate meetings, right? Not one invoice, 14 invoices. Got it? Last but not least, we're going to make sure that we pay the expense, which is paying ourselves. Once we pay ourselves, this can be in the form of a check, it can be for, for a money order, however you wish to, to pay yourself. But once that happens, the transaction is done and the expense is recorded like any other expense for the business and you can 1099 yourself and that is how we get the Augusta rule. Now, last but not least, which you guys didn't know, I placed a seven here. Document, document this income on your personal tax form and write it off on your business taxes. For most self-employed individuals, this means using a Schedule C. You have a different type of business entity formation than the typical LLC or sole proprietorship, such as an S-Corp. You'll need to document this business expense on your P&L, okay? How much rental expenses can you deduct? Remember, IRC Section 288 is meant to facilitate a tax benefit for legitimate businesses with legitimate business activity. If a local hotel would charge $1,000 a day for a one-day rental of a boardroom with drinks and snacks included, you should not rent space for yourself for $4,000. Likewise, if you are having a business meeting of two individuals at your own residence, you should not use the comparison of a hotel ballroom for a shareholder meeting of 500 individuals, okay? Use common sense, good old honesty to gauge how much you should deduct and do your research on comparable venue prices. Now, some taxpayers are like, yeah, Carlton, can you do all this for me? Absolutely. I work with a lot of taxpayers that will just, I'm handling 100% of the, the research and doing that piece. It's up to you on if you want to work with a professional that help you do that. Now, I want to give you this information because a lot of you guys can walk away knowing how to do this. I want to make sure that you walk away knowing how to take this tax write-off. This tax write-off is one that flies under the radar because it's not, it's not being widely talked about. CPAs know about it, but it's one that you kind of have to ask them. I know it sucks that you have to do all this research yourself and then go to your CPA and tell them, so I, can I do this tax strategy? And then they tell you yes. And then you get upset wondering, well, why didn't you tell me that? Truth of the matter is, is their role may not be as a tax strategist. Their role may be to be your CPA. 
which means they're going to do a great job, by the way. You should never hate on your CPA unless they're doing something in, incorrectly. Their job might be to file your tax returns, take your expenses, your income, and submit everything for you and make sure that everything's done correctly. My role as a tax strategist is to make sure that I'm taking advantage of every strategy you, you qualify for with integrity, with the law. So when you go to my CPAs and you file the tax returns, all you're doing is just turning over documents to them because everything has already been solved. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off a few more names. We had a few more people that just joined. Jeremy Jones. Congratulations, Jeremy. Colt Moss. Congratulations, Colt Moss. Tyler Patterson. Congratulations, Tyler Patterson. Natoya Frederick. Congratulations, Natoya Frederick. Brian Scott Ashby. Congratulations, Brian Scott. Ramon Valdez. Congratulations, Ramon. Heather L. McGee. Congratulations, Heather. Fritz Gerald St. Me. Congratulations, Justin Justin Hyman, congratulations, Alan Pham, congratulations, Jonathan Scribner, and congratulations, Tim Zai, and Joel Mossinet. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations to all of you guys who are going into the Tax Free Wealth Challenge, ready to save some money. I'm ready to help you. You guys have no idea how excited I am for these, uh, these five days. It's kind of like my Super Bowl, and I know Super Bowl just passed, but this is like my moment to shine. This is when I get to teach all of the strategies that I have to offer show you ways in which you might be able to save yourself on your 2022 tax returns before, before you file those and be able to help you implement strategies at the beginning of the year so you actually have more liquidity within your business or more liquidity as a W-2 taxpayer to adjust your withholdings, take home more money on your paychecks if that's something you desire. So that way you can grow your investment portfolio and be able to acquire more rentals or do the things that you want to do uh, with that additional tax or with that additional cash flow. My name is Carlton Dennis. I just want to say thank you guys so much for jumping on this live with me here today. I'm gonna to read off a few more because we just had two more that joined. All right, Lillian Turek, congratulations Lillian. Sabrina Morfa, congratulations Sabrina. Ella Acapla, I, I'm gonna mess that one up. Congratulations Ella, congratulations. Thank you guys, awesome. All right guys, I will be um, seeing all of you guys at the Tax-Free Wealth event. I won't be back on here live tomorrow. I will be hosting a webinar. I will be hosting a free webinar tomorrow at 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Please check the community tab if you're open during that time period and you'd like to, to jump on. The webinar I'll be teaching on will be how to avoid overpaying on your taxes in 2023. I'm sure a lot of you guys would like to hear a little bit more about how to avoid overpaying on your taxes. I will see you guys at the webinar tomorrow. If I don't see you at the webinar, I'm going to see you at the Tax-Free Wealth event. Make sure that you join as a VIP so I can spend some time with you. You'll be able to have the ability to, one, have me review some of the things that you have going on with your tax position. And us can, we can figure out what we need to do together strategically to reduce your tax bill. I look forward to seeing you guys at the Tax-Free Wealth event. Over and out. Cheers, guys.